Okay, so we're set up here up at Langs Beach. And you can see I've got the Red Cat here on the AM5 and the Ascar 65PHQ on the CM60. It's starting to get a bit chilly now. Um, it was down at 8 degrees this morning up here. Back home it was about 5 degrees, so um, definitely a big change from the nice warm summer nights we had. So um, the Ascar 65PHQ is going to be imaging an area of the sky sort of around the um, Statue of Liberty and the Southern Tadpole um, Nebula and so that will be doing that for the first part of the night um, and then both the Red Cat and the Ascar are going to be switching over to another target which I only just learned about recently called the Scary Face Nebula and it's near M16 which I sort of wasn't really that aware of so um, I'm shooting with the two different setups I'm going to combine them obviously they've got different uh, focal lengths etc um, and also this is using a 533 and that's using a 2600 mm pro but uh, if I calibrate the frames individually for the different telescopes and then combine them kind of like a mosaic in AstroPixel processor that should work fine so just going to wait for it to get dark hope that the wind stays down because it's supposed to be windy tonight so that could be an issue and um, yeah hopefully get imaging and hopefully it stays clear again this is the fourth clear night in a row which is incredible fingers crossed Where exactly is the Scary Face Nebula? Well, if we look in the offline sky map um, in Nina, which is the easiest place to look at it, I thought. Eagle Nebula here, we've got the Omega Nebula here, and sort of part of this whole extended area of nebulosity, we've got this area here. So this is SH2-54, part of the Sharpless catalogue. And within there is the Scary Face Nebula sitting right in here. And this can often be identified by um, a star cluster which if I turn on the NGC um, labels, which is, it's fill up the screen very quickly, um, it's NGC 6604 is in here and it's actually the open um, star cluster. So that is the area that I was imaging. Okay, let's see what we got in Pixon Sight. So in Alpha, and you can see I've basically in AstroPixel processor, I've just um, stacked both the ASI 2600 framing with the Ascar 65 PHQ, along with the Red Cat um, 51 and the ASI 533, which get, gave me a very similar sort of uh, field of view in this area here, which is what I was trying to capture. Um, now, obviously, this is a little bit on an angle, so what I did was I just sort of straightened it up a bit so that when I was actually cropping it, I wouldn't be losing too much because I had to crop down to sort of this line, sort of into here, um, up to about there and to there, but this was the area that I was concentrating on, so um, cropped it in, that's what it looked like. Um, the S2 
same idea and once that was um, cropped in and, and aligned this is what it looked like here and this is what the O3 looked like. Now with the Hydrogen Alpha um, it's got a lot of you know nice detail as they, they always do. Uh, the face is here, this is what the face here is and it's sort of supposed to have like sort of flaming hair going back here and eyes and a mouth here. It looks a little bit clearer I think on the final image. Um, on the HA there's definition there but it, it does get a little bit washed out because the HA is quite bright. The S2 which doesn't look like necessarily has anywhere near the detail actually has some quite nice sort of features in the background here so and the face has some slightly more defined features. So um, when it came to creating a luminance, I basically made a luminance out of the HA and the S2 together. The O3 I wasn't too worried about including in the luminance because there wasn't a lot of detail. It was more, sort of more wishy-washy stuff and a little bit here in the face. But um, basically what I then did was, um, I think we did some blur exterminator here. Uh, again, so the first one was correct only and the second one was just the usual sort of settings and then star exterminator and then when it came to stretching I just went up here and used the easy processing suite which um, I just used the easy soft stretch here. We have a look at that and with these settings I just sort of dragged that down a little bit there just to bring the central bit a bit brighter and then just used that and uh, actually gave quite a pleasing result um, which was, let me just bring it down, which was this. So I decided to work with that. Um, the S2, sort of similar idea, some blur exterminator, uh, remove the stars. Did um, again with the easy processing suite, did the stretching and then just sort of did a bit more curves work to try and increase some of the um, uh, contrast here because I really wanted the features of the face to come out and you can see it's looking a bit more like a face like there's a mouth down there and a nose and eyes and the, the head back there so um, that was that the O3 blue exterminator uh, remove the stars stretch again with the easy processing suite but it was kind of quite pale in the background so what I did was I actually um, did a bit of curves work and then I made a range mask which is uh, this here just to sort of bring this out a little bit more um, so that it was a little more prominent and uh, then just because it was quite noisy did a little bit of noise exterminator on it just to try and smooth that out since I was stretching it a bit beyond probably what it should have been stretched and so that when it blended with the the hydrogen alpha and the sulfur, it uh, didn't actually create a very noisy image. Um, now, as far as the stretching was concerned, uh, as the combination was concerned, here it is here, um, and this is just an SHO uh, combination here. Uh, it gives you a lot of purple stars, which you can just remove out and then work with stars separately. Um, and that was... Um, brought to this point once it was stretched very green obviously so time to do some SNRD green which I didn't I actually did 60% I didn't want to get rid of it all initially so if we come forward it came to here so there is you know some brighter yellow some sort of more greeny yellow and a bit more green and then the blue here and while I was processing this I didn't realize that um, this little bubble here, which I did in a previous image and a video, which I'll put a link above, um, which I called the croc eye um, bubble. And this bubble is there and in the center there is actually an O5 type star, which although I don't think it's been stated as directly responsible for this, but it's kind of a smoking gun if you like. So I was quite pleased that that little, little extra bit was in there which I hadn't planned on or didn't even know it was there because I forgot I was in the similar area um, and then it was a matter of doing a little bit more curves work here again just to bring up some of the contrast to try and sort of preserve the blue here and particularly here I did have a bit of purple in this area and um, I ended up sort of getting rid of that 
So I got to this point and I tried a few things um, with the color mask mod tool, etc., etc. But I, I kind of wanted a bit more red look to this. I wanted a bit more of an HOO look um, without doing an HOO and, and dropping the S2. So I decided to, to take from this point, go straight into Photoshop. Now, if I bring up Photoshop, what um, I was working with here, uh, there was a little bit of purple here. So I did a little mask and it's kind of subtle, but I just sort of removed it, sort of made it a bit more blue because um, I didn't like the purple tinge there. And then carried on doing a bit of work um, with the uh, camera raw filter and just warmed it up a little bit, but wasn't really getting it to the red that I wanted without sort of really mucking the whole thing up. I think I got to about this point here. It was all getting a bit, little bit on the orange side, but I really wanted it to have much more of that flame look, particularly with the face, since it's supposed to be scary and supposed to have this look of sort of flaming hair coming back. So what did I do next? Well, as I said, I wanted to create that sort of HOO look or bring out the red a bit more, but I didn't want to completely lose this SHO look. So I decided to um, do something a little different and I um, brought the Hydrogen Alpha, I made a TIFF files out of the Hydrogen Alpha, the Sulfur and the Oxygen 3, the stylus versions, brought them into Photoshop. Then with the Hydrogen Alpha, um, I converted that layer from, if we go to image mode and changed it from grayscale to RGB. And then I created two more layers, um, one where I put the S2 in, and the next layer I put the O3 in. Now, um, there's a couple of things that you need to do. You need to convert these to screen mode, these top two, so that um, it doesn't completely overwrite the layers below. Uh, then I added in a curves um, layer here, which you can do um, right there, and um, and then with the, you can press Alt, and if you press this, but, uh, and you press button there, so that actually unlinked it, but if I press that again, it links it. So this curves layer is linked to this one, this curves layer is linked to this one, and this one is lay, lay, um, connected to there. And then it was a matter of going into the curves tool and changing the amount of red, green, and blue that I wanted in each of these filters. So if you have a look here, you can see on this one that the red is up full, the green is sort of about to here, and the blue is over to here. Now I just varied these and sort of randomly and sort of got to a point that I quite liked, but you just sort of grab these and you just move them sort of up and down like that. I kind of got this look, it was a little bit overly red, um, but then I went and um, made a new layer that combined all the changes of these together by doing alt Control shift e and that produced a layer up here and then i did some work with the uh, camera raw filter and with a whole lot of adjustments came out with roughly something that looks like this i couldn't sort of completely uh, reduplicate it again for the video but i can show you um, over here what i did end up with so what I did end up with was, um, if I just move this, I'm going to take this layer here, and that's 100%. So this is what I had, and um, I then decided I wanted to blend this with the underlying uh, sort of more SHO look. So I brought this down to about, I think it was 30%. So there was a bit of a sort of a combination there. Um, that's it before, and that's it with it added. And then did Alt Control Shift E to produce another layer up here and worked in the camera raw tool to come to this point here, which was sort of closer to the end result. I did do some more work um, with, with this, but the next thing I wanted to do was um, there's a bit of noise in here, a bit of color noise in here. So I then wanted to sort of blur this a little bit and I used the convolution tool um, in PixInsight, and then I produced a, a luminance out of the HA and the S2, uh, because I like the features of both of these, and really sort of made it quite contrasty, because when I put it on top of the, the sort of rather bright 
um, where are we here, this rather bright version that really deepens the colors, etc. And um, gave what I felt was a, a nice appealing look for the final image. All right, well, that's the Scary Face Nebula. Um, is it scary? You decide. You can have a look at it when I show you the final image. Not so much, but it's, it was an interesting target I'd never heard of before. And uh, I was also kind of pleased to see that uh, the little croc eye bubble was in there as well. So a bit of a bonus. Anyway, look, uh, until next time, I hope you're getting lots and lots of clear skies.